we are having some technical issues where I can't see my chat. So I'm going to wait a second until I show up live on Facebook and YouTube, and that way I can watch the chat from those platforms. But if you can see me and hear me just fine, let me know where you're tuning in from in the chat box below. I'm coming to you from my home sewing studio here in North Central Florida, where I was crossing my fingers that it didn't rain today, and it didn't because we are like hitting record highs of the amount of rain for the month of March, and I need to get my plants in the garden. Y'all know that. So let me refresh this page real quick because I want to see my chat box. I don't know why this thing is not working for us, but we are going to get started. You are probably seeing this a funky little cardigan that I'm wearing. This is the Corinne cardigan. Um, it's one of the designs in the new, the upcoming Nick Collage Make Along. If you've been watching Fiber Fridays here for a while, I think I probably mentioned Nick Collage projects that I'm, or whips that I'm in the middle of probably every single episode of Fiber Friday. So I'm super excited. They are um, putting together another one. And Amy reached out to me to become an affiliate and so that I can share all the stuff about the make along with you all. This time around, it's called a make along because for example, this project features both knitting and crochet, right? So you probably noticed the little granny squares here, then the sleeves are knit. So this is the project that I'm gonna be doing in the knit collage make-alongs or the, their previous knit-alongs that I've participated in. You get like a bunch of projects. I think it's like four different projects. You get the patterns for each one if you sign up, plus video lessons that walk you through step-by-step -step on how to make all four. This time around, they're also adding more bonus ones. There's four additional bonus patterns that don't include the videos, but include the pattern with the instructions. So from the four, they kind of do like this cool survey thing to get the feel and the vibe of what their customers want as, as far as what projects to make. So I was super happy to see that this one made the cut because it's going to be the one that I'm making. I didn't make this one. They sent me this as a sample, but look how cute. Oh my gosh. The little granny squares are all put together, like you crochet them and then you put it together with knit sleeves. And so um, I'm obviously I'm gonna be working with different, not obviously, but I will be working with some different colors. Um, Y'all know I love big, bold, brights. So for mine, that's what I'm gonna be doing. If you wanna find out more details about the knit collage make-alongs uh, that they've done in the past or that they're working on now, cause this one is gonna be, it, it's not yet open for signups, but it's coming up really soon, like in the next week or two. So just keep an eye out. I put a link in the description box of this YouTube live here of this video where you can click and that's my affiliate link. So it'll take you to like the, the make-along page with all the details so you can see what's what. Uh, basically the way that I've done it in the past or that I have participated in it is like I choose which project I want to make from the four that are included because you get video lessons for all of them. Then I choose the colorway that I want for the yarn um, combos that I want and then you order it and then you get emails that give you access to the video lessons, access to the live chats. They have like one-on-one -on -one help so if you're stuck in some step you can call a number and talk to one of the people on their team and they walk you through the projects which is pretty amazing. It's like a ton of value for what you're paying for it. The materials, the lessons, the patterns, plus help. Okay? So, oh, I wish I could get this to show up. Give me one second. Let me see if I can get my live chat on here. Do you see a live chat for you? <laughs> I know what I'm going to do. Let me go in here. To the Facebook one and see if that works for me. Sometimes you know this technology stuff, it works great when it works and when it don't, it's a beast. All right, hey Lizette tuning in. Okay, let me say hi to some friends now that I can see the chat box. Good gosh. Tracy tuning in from Australia. It's probably tomorrow morning for you girl. Hey Barbara, she says really cute. I love it. And this is actually a size three. I usually make like their size four. Well, it kind of varies on the project, but I plan to make like a size four, but I kind of like the way that this one fits, like not super overlapped. And even for Florida, the holiness here and the openness of the granny square panels here. <laughs> Let me stop. Okay, so um, great, great, great. Okay, so I can see a bunch of you in there now. She, Grace says, um, hey Vanessa, I love what you're wearing. Thanks. So this is going to be one of the projects in the make along and I'm glad they sent me the sample because this is the one that I want to make. So again, this one is called the Corinne Cardi and um, you can check out the link that I've included in the description box of both the Facebook post and the YouTube channel to find out 
more about this. Now, the blue here, I will say this is like their main yarn. This is Nick Collage's signature yarn. Um, and this one is the Serenity yarn, is what this project, the main yarn of it is. And then they have all these cute, these, this is not actually yarn. It's like fabric yarn. So there's strips of fabric in all these wild, funky colors. Oh my gosh. I literally could sit here, stand here all day looking at how cute this is. Can you imagine this? in like a color, like just with jeans. For me, I think I want to make it in like a orangey rusty color. I love that color with like a dark wash denim jeans. That's going to look amazing. I just put it on with a black t-shirt so that y'all can see the cardigan itself. Okay. Let me take off the cardigan before I wreck it. Cause it's somebody's. They just sent me this as a sample. Although Amy, I might keep it. <laughs> Let me hang it up. Look how cute. And the yarn is so um, thick and bulky, you know, it's still light, but because of the thickness of the yarn, the projects whip up pretty quickly. Let me just drape that over my dress form there. Okay, so let's move on to the next thing that I have. Let's go ahead and talk about the latest product that we added to the shop. So a lot of you have signed up for my knit alongs in the past, and you know that when I do beginner projects, I typically will include the knitting needles, but Obviously we're not gonna do a huge set. We'll just include like the knitting uh, needle for beginners and in the one size. And typically when I have beginner students, I will include the bamboo needles or some type of a birch or coated birch or something like that. Because the wood needles when you're knitting tend to have more grab. And so if you're new to knitting and you're kind of still getting the hang of the movement of making the stitches, if you use metal needles, sometimes they will just fly off the needles and then you have all these drop stitches, which, you know, as a beginner is kind of a beast to have to deal with. Okay. So some of you though, that are more advanced and more confident beginners are, have been emailing me to ask about what needles do I use in metal because you want to try them out. So we went ahead and added into the inventory of our online shop at craftygemini.com slash shop my favorite interchangeable needle sets. They're the Chagu needles and they're metal. They're the twist red lace interchangeable needles. And so there's three different kits, three or three different sets. There's a small that includes a chunk of just the smaller sizes, a large, which is a chunk of the larger sizes, and then a complete set, which includes both the small and the large set. So let's go over and shoot to this camera and I will open these up so I can show you all what they, what comes in it. If you've been on the fence and been thinking about, you know, splurging because it's definitely an investment. Uh, let's see, this is a small set. So it comes with a little zipper case. You have a pocket in the front. It usually has like a needle gauge, some stitch markers on this one. Zoom out. You said this is a super zoom lens, so I can't really go out more. I'll scoot over there. So we have like a little needle gauge with a little um, a five inch ruler at the top here so you can measure and it also has metric on the other side. It comes with stitch markers and then these are the little tools that you can add. They're stoppers to stop so if you're changing out the tip, the needle tips, you can put these stoppers on it to change out to other um, or to use those tips on another project. It's just like a holding place so you, for you to remove the needle tips and just put a stopper and then the little pins that allow you to tighten the needles uh, to the cords. Okay so all that comes in that little zipper uh, compartment and then the main one on the small set it includes all this and the small set, remember I said it was like a chunk of the smaller sizes. These sizes are US size two through eight, okay, are the needle tips that you get. So you can see it's just the knitting needle, or the knitting needle tips, okay? And then they have all the little threads on the end for you to screw onto the cords that come, okay? And in here it'll tell you like um, what size cords they are, like the lengths. So a 14 inch, a 22 inch, and a 30 inch cord are in here. So you screw these onto here and that way you can make your own knitting needles, however long you need the cord to be, or however the, you know, whatever the size of the, knit, of the knitting needle tip itself needs to be for your projects. So US size two is 2.75 millimeters. It has it both in US sizes and in metric across the top here. So the small set includes US sizes two through eight, okay? And then in the case has the spots for the other sizes. If you were like add them to your collection, say little by little, and it has like a little instruction booklet in there. Okay. So that's the small set. And that, like I said, is just those smaller sizes. The larger, the larger, um, set includes the larger sizes. I'm going to show you just the complete set next. So you can see that it has both the small and the large. These are my favorite. 
definitely a splurge. They are pricey, but man, when you need like a, a 32 inch size eight or whatever, I just open up my interchangeable set and I grab it from there and I make it with that. You know, I put the cord together with the tips that I need. This is the complete set here. So let me just show y'all this and I'm going to see if this thing is decided to come to life or not. I guess not, not yet. So the complete set is chunky because it has all these sizes from a U.S. size 2, which is here, through U.S. size 8. So that's 2.75 to 5 millimeters. And then here it has U.S. size 9 through 15. So up to 10 millimeter needles. Look how great for chunky yarns and big quick projects. So this is the complete set of the interchangeable needles. Okay. And obviously it brings more cords because you got more needles in there too. And for them, for the Chagu needles, you use the small cords and then you have the large cords for some of the larger needles. And you can tell by the size of the threads here. So these go with this and these go with that, okay? But anyways, I just wanted to let y'all knitters know that we now have these sets in the online shop and it's a drop down box. So you can choose the small, the large, or the complete set, okay? If you have been looking, um, for an interchangeable set, I highly recommend Chiaogu. These are my favorites. If you're fresh and new to knitting, maybe stay away from the metal tips for now until you get a good handle on it. I remember I started off with metal, and when I first started, I think I used like a US size 4 needle or something with like fingering weight yarn. Oh my word. I was, they were flying off the needles, and I was like, I hate knitting. <laughs> sure enough, it was me starting with the super thin yarn the slightly larger needles, and metal tips. Hello. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Oh, Lisette says that these sets are great. She says she has the complete set, and I just love them, she says. Me too, girl. All right. Let me just make sure I don't have anything here. Okay. So we said Chago needles are in the shop. Remember, you can always shop with us at craftygemini.com slash shop. Um, there's a category for, like, crochet slash knitting. Anything that's related to Fiber Fridays especially, we will put there. So those knitting needles should already be there. And I think they're on the featured tab too of the site. Okay, next up. Let's talk about a work in progress that I have. Because I feel like by talking about this, I'm holding myself accountable. I have to finish this project, y'all. Um, <laughs> let me lighten this up. I don't know why it's so dark in here. Okay. If you've been following me for a while, you have seen this project probably a million times. It's not done. Don't judge me. I need to get it done. My friend's son, who recently was like, if you're stuck, take a picture, send it to me. I will help you. So I pulled out the pattern instructions, tried to find out where I was. And then of course I read the step and I'm like, why did I stop here? I know how to do this. So I am going to get back on this this weekend. My son has a soccer game tomorrow. Soccer is my favorite time to sit and knit so that I don't holler and they don't kick me out because I am one of those parents. Okay, so this, my friends, is like an amazing sweater. Luckily, I still love it. I still love the yarn, and I am so mad at myself that I haven't finished it. Like, I'm this far along in the project. Why have I not completed this thing? So I started this sweater. This is by Andrea Mowry. This is the Weekender sweater. I think probably a million people in the world have made this. This pattern came out years ago, so everybody and their mama has made one of these. I cast this on April of 2018, I want to say, is when I went to visit my friend Stacy in Houston, and we went to like a Houston fiber show or whatever. And I bought the yarn, a sweater's quantity's worth of Night Owl Fibers. This is Rachel. Um, her and her mom were at the booth, and she is the indie dyer behind Night Owl. And I'm just going to... Y'all can look her up. She has a podcast on YouTube and um, a yarn shop. So she sells, she's the owner and the indie dyer behind Night Owl Fibers Hand Dyed Yarn. So um, the pattern for this sweater, it's designed to be made in worsted weight yarn. But I saw this DK weight yarn that she had, which is a little bit thinner. And I was obsessed. She had the five skeins that I needed, so I bought them all. And you know that I was thinking about this, look where I'm down to. This little bit of yarn, and I was like, where's the other ball of yarn? I'm still missing a skein. I think I have two more. And so I wound it up, I found them. They were nowhere near my yarn stash, and but I'm glad I remembered seeing it. So <laughs> I found the yarn, so I do have the yarn to finish it. But look how pretty this is. This is the front of it. It has kind of like this faux seam going down here. 
this is the pearl side of the stitches and it's knit inside out. So the pretty side of this sweater will be like this, reverse stockinette. It's this gorgeous gray color. Oh, Lizette says that she loves it. She's about to start knitting the Weekender Light. Post pictures, Lizette, in the group, in the yarn and fiber. What did I call that Facebook group? It's yarn and fiber with Crafty Gemini, something like that. If y'all want to join our private Facebook group, definitely head over to Facebook. You can do a quick search. Just type in yarn and fiber Crafty Gemini, and there's a private group that will show up, and then we'll um, like request to be added to it if you are on Facebook, and we'll add you to that group so we can chit-chat about all the things fiber in there as well. Hi, Dawn. Thanks for tuning in. And so this gray but beautifully speckled, I mean, does that even show up how pretty it is? my stitching ain't that bad either okay it has a high low hem obviously all these need to be weaved in woven in whatever this is the front the longer hem is in the back and if I show you where I kind of am as far as um where I am in the process of making it this is the whole front so this is the part that goes like in front here this yoke area and I've separated look at the back Oh my gosh. I have these um, stitches on a holder, just on waist yarn to hold them in place. And so I think I need to do like two rows here of something and then we move on to another step. But I've knit a lot and it's been sitting like this for four, three, four years. Oh, so sad. So yes, I will make some progress on this. I will return back on the first Friday of May for Fiber Friday and I better have some, better have made some progress on this y'all. So Cheer me on, and if you have a whip, take this as a little bit of inspiration to maybe pull one out. Just close your eyes, go into your whip basket, pull a project out, and let's work on this. Let's make an effort this month of April, since today is the first, to work on a project that we just have chilling in a bag somewhere. Okay, so this is what I'm going to start working on. I will take this with me tomorrow because the next step is like two rows of something that surely I can do at least that. Okay, so cute. And the yarn is amazing. So <sighs> I pulled it back out and then I thought, wow, this is gorgeous. Why haven't I finished it? The story of my life. Does anybody else feel like that? Why do you think we're like that, people? I don't know. Okay, so that's that little project bag. Whoop. Put this other ball of yarn. Grace, <laughs> Grace says, you have so much done, you need to finish it. I know. Can you imagine? Literally, and, and the saddest part, Grace, is that all that progress that I've shown you, I didn't like the first two weeks <laughs> that I cast on. Like by the time I left my friend's house, we went. I went to her house in Texas, we went to the event, I bought the yarn, I cast on that same night. In a couple days I had like that much done and by the time I was on the plane I kept going, kept going, kept going. And in like two weeks I had all of that done. And then it just sat for three years or four, whatever it is. I don't even wanna think four years, my goodness. Yes, Lizette says, I'm so excited you're gonna finish it. Let's empower each other. That's what I thought, I thought, I will hold myself accountable by sharing it with my friends on Fiber Friday and hopefully somebody else will feel the same. So I will be looking for y'all in the chat next month to tell me, hey, Vanessa, I did complete a whip too um, <laughs> based on this month's Whip Wednesday. Okay, next up on my list is dun, 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 a new toy that I got. If you tuned in last Fiber Friday, you may recall that my friend Vicky, who is now my friend, she, I, I didn't know her before, but the sheep shearers that came to our home to shear our sheep recommended her and they were like, hey, this lady nearby is starting a mini mill. Um, you should check her out, whatever. So I called her, um, reached out to her, and then she ended up coming to my friend's house for a sock cranking event. And so we met there, exchanged the wool. She processed my wool and turns out she had brought these little mini electric spinning wheels. Oh my gosh, there. This thing, first I was like, please, plastic little wheels, like I have a wooden spinning wheel, it's fine. So she had two, she had that bitty bitty one, whatever it's called, the Nano. They're made by electric eel wheels, so they're EEW, and this is the 6.0 version. She had this one there too. I was focused on sock cranking, so I wasn't really like trying to get the hang of this thing, but she said when I'm going to be getting more in stock. So us at the sock cranking event, of course, you know, <laughs> while we're cranking socks on one device, we're just like, yeah, put me down for one of those electric wheels too. And so I did, I had ordered it. So she recently got back to me and said, hey, I have it in stock. I'm going to ship it out to you. And I got it. 
I didn't take it out of the box until today because I had so much other stuff I had to get done before I start playing on this. And I'm so glad that I did. It's perfect for today. And I'm just going to say after 10 minutes of working with this thing, I'm obsessed. So let's go over. It is a spinning wheel, an electric one. Look how little it is. Okay. If I put it on my um, measuring mat here, let's count the boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight less than eight inches, it's about seven and three quarters the base this way, and then one, two, three, four, and five, and it's just shy of five inches wide, so a super tiny space. Remember how on some of the Fiber Friday episodes I've been saying, some of y'all want me to do like a spinning demo and just show you how I spin. Obviously, I just started spinning last year. I'm not a pro. I don't even know what I'm doing. I don't even know what technique I'm doing, so when I spin on this, maybe some of you spinning experts can put in the comment like, you are doing short forward draw long little whatever draw i don't know the names i've taken classes i have but i just do what feels comfortable in my hands so this and, and i haven't really been able to show y'all in the demo because the wheel that i have i love it is a shack ladybug and so it's with our cameras and the setup here it's kind of awkward to like sit down and change the setup of the cameras and stuff for a fiber friday and so when i took this out the box it took me like three minutes to set up and I'm literally spinning already. I did this right before we went live, y'all. And OMG. Okay, so look at my little pedal. Different people may have different pedals because I feel like I've seen some of the YouTube videos where people have the EEW 6.0 and the foot pedal is like a proper pedal. This is super teensy. And there's like a little gap right there. And so I'm not gonna press it now because it's still plugged up. If you press it down, whoop. If you press it down, it starts spinning. And if you press it again, it will stop. It has this bobbin. Let me show you how the bobbins came. I'm so glad I got cute colors. So this one, you just put them together with the different pieces. You just screw them in. They have ball bearings in here. Um, if there's any of them that you get that with the little um, bearing thing out, just pop it in. You can just pop it into the end piece here. And so this is threaded. And then I just line it up good Look. and that's it that's how you put your bottoms together so I love that for traveling you can take them apart if obviously they're not full of yarn yet and just pack them pretty flat in a bag this is three more I don't is that typical it came with six bobbins I was like I'm not gonna say nothing um, I feel like the other wheel I bought come with like three so when I see these two bags in there, I was like, okay, I'll take it. The bobbins are huge. And I feel like I, I heard somebody say that they hold eight ounces of yarn. That's a lot. One braid of yarn is about four ounces typically. And this thing holds eight. So look how chunky it is. It's huge. It has little magnets right here where your little um, tool that you use to, to pull the thread through here has um, the two little hooks, the smaller one for thinner stuff. And if you have the... Um, what do you call this? The orifice reducer, the whatever reducer on the front here. This is a little cap that pops out. So if I take this out, it has a bigger opening for thicker and chunkier, like art yarns kind of stuff. And so, um, my default yarn is really thin. I mean, not super, super thin and fine, but if I do two singles like this, it usually ends up being like a DK, like a chunky DK or a light worsted. So it's pretty thin. So I just put that orifice reducer thing on there. So this little tool stays there so you don't lose it because every time you break your yarn or you have to reattach or you're adding more um, yarn to spin, you need to pass it through there. So I love that that little thing is right there. I'll tell you the truth. My other one, I don't know where it is. The one for my other knitting needle. So I have to like grab a different tool for that. But let me see here. Does anybody have one of these? Grace says, you always have the best toys. <laughs> you know, they're toys for me to play with, but they're also part of my business. You know what I'm saying? Um, oh, Lizette says she's heard about these. She's wanted one so bad. I ordered it from my friend Vicky. So I have the link. Thank you for saying that because I forgot to mention it. Um, the link is in the chat box below. Vicky's Wool. Do you have her website up there or something that we can put up? Um, the link is in the description box below for the EEW 6.0. You can just go to her shop and it's right there. Um, I think it's vickyswool.com and you can shop at her page. And let me tell you, my other wheel cost me over $700. This thing comes in at less than 300, like 200 and something, and I'm literally obsessed. Okay, real quick, on the other side, 
This, it has a speed dial here, speed knob thing. It's all black, so it's kind of showing up even darker for y'all, but you get the idea. It has a knob with numbers here that goes from one through six. This is the speed at which it's spinning the flyer here. Okay, then you have a Z and an S. This is for the twist. So I always spin my singles in Z, and then when I go to ply the two together, you do it the other opposite way, so S. Okay, so mine is set to Z there. And then this knob is for the tension, okay? And you just, it has a little piece of like a cotton thread and it's just going there. You turn it one way, it tightens it and you loosen it the other way. That's it. Then all the stuff plugs in here. One is for the power and one is for the, um, the little foot pedal for this, the on and off switch. And let me see if I can spin a little bit for y'all. Cause I do want you to see this. One thing that I noticed as soon as I started it was how quiet it was. It has a super small footprint too. Look at me. Do you? <laughs> You see me looking down at the ground like for the foot pedal. I'm so used to doing Whip Wednesdays where I'm sewing at the sewing machine. <laughs> I'm like, where's my pedal? Like, oh no, but it's right here. So I'm just going to tap it with my hand. Okay, hold on because I, I found that I start good at about speed number two. So the little white line on the knob is right at the number two. Okay, thank you. So we shared the link there, vickyswool.com slash store like in her shop page and you'll see it i think she put, moved it up it's like one of the first items on there if y'all are looking for a little wheel and i know that these were sold out for a good bit so if you're looking for a little um e-spinning e-spinner um an electric spin spinning wheel this is definitely i'm like literally obsessed that it's so little but you can get so much yarn on because i know the nano version the bitty bitty baby version i mean it literally was like this big next to this machine you can't do too much, you know, maybe like an ounce or two. I'm not even too sure, but it was way less than what you can spin on this thing here. Let me, give me one second. Let me grab a sip of water. Let me get my mind right. Cause you know, spinning is like meditation for me. <laughs> I'm still laughing that I'm like looking for the foot pedal to hit. Okay. Nothing there. Okay, here we go. Let me see how I can do this so y'all can see the whole thing of it. If I can stand on this side. Okay, hold on, let me undo some so this thing doesn't just start yanking it out on me. Can y'all hear that? It's, it's really quiet, right, Brandy? You probably can't even hear it over there. Really, really faint sound. Oh my goodness, it's not shaking on the table. Granted, I'm not going super duper fast either. And this is the first time that I'm like, hi, trying to look at a camera while I do something like this. And I'm going a little bit slower, but you just tap it to start and tap it to go. So I know as a beginner, like the first, first time I could have never probably done this. Like I would have been like, oh no, it's pulling it. Like I can't, cause you get super anxious and then you start yanking on it cause it's moving too fast. But once you kind of settle into the pace, like for me too, like once I do maybe a couple minutes at this speed of two, then I can like give it another little one quarter knob turn up, not quite to three, but a little bit more, especially if it's like a new fiber blend that I'm working with. And now I got the feel for the staple length. Okay. I'm going to, here's another thing I noticed. Did you see how quick it started and how quick it stopped from when I pressed this? I love that. When you are treadling, at least on my wheel, I haven't tried that many to know, but when I'm treadling and I have to slow down, it's kind of like a vintage sewing machine where, you know, like if you floor a vintage sewing machine and then you take your foot off the pedal, it'll stop, but it'll be like, da, 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 the, until it fully slows down, but it's still taking stitches this whole time. Okay. So that's how the wooden spinning wheel is for me. So it still will keep spinning. And I'm like a, type of like super spaz person. I like everything fast and quick. So if I need to stop, I need it to stop on a dime dime. Like that's one of the first things I noticed that when I press this, it immediately starts spinning. So you better be ready. <laughs> and two is when I want it to stop, it, it stops right, right there when I press it. I love that about this thing. You saw that? So quick. It just is ready to go. So you don't have to worry about it pulling in too much if you're going at a faster speed because you know that if you do press the, the little pedal thing, it's going to just stop right when you want it to look. Whew, it barely did another half turn and it stopped. I love it. That part, I mean, these are all little things that you don't really think about until you compare it and use a different spinning wheel. In this case, my electric 
EEW 6.0. So again, I bought this one from my friend Vicky at vickyswool.com. So y'all can order from her if you need some. I know she has some in stock. And then these are the little guides. So I can see that I'm kind of starting to fill up in this area here. So all I got to do is keep scooting it you know, teensy, teensy bit over and over. And you just kind of move these back and forth as you fill up your bobbin. So, I mean, that's, that's it. It took me five minutes to set up to put the leader on and literally just grabbed the Rolag and started spinning. So, so good. Um, this might be my new favorite little wheel, y'all. Especially cause I don't, I mean, eight ounce capacity on the bobbin, which I'm pretty sure that's what I read. Um, that's a lot a lot a lot so you could sit there and do this all day long take it with you on a trip plug it up at the dinner table while people are watching tv or watching the game this makes no noise this ain't bothering anybody oh love it thank you vicky for introducing us that day to these electric eel wheels and then this is what happens with spinning like i'm in the middle of a live but i'm just like let me just finish this last little <laughs> It's how it always is. It's like, oh, just going to finish this bit. And then you're done and you're like, oh, that was pretty quick. Let me grab another little bundle of fluff to spin. But these are just, um, this is a little Rolag that I had, that I made. Um, I showed these last, uh, maybe two or, th two or three episodes ago that I made from one of the fiber advents that I signed up for over the holidays. It was like a December, um, uh, fiber advent. And so I just took all the little nuggets of, of different types of wool, blended them together on my uh, blending board and made these Rolags. Oop, there. Ridiculously easy. Okay, I'm obsessed. So y'all will be seeing this more. So whenever I come on here, like if I'm doing a little demo of how I spin uh, our own homegrown wool, like the Florida Cracker Sheep wool that we have, now I can do demos because just like my sewing machine, I can place it on my table and spin for y'all. I'm so excited. Yes, Karen says the eel wheel is great for those on a budget. She says, so glad you're spinning. I'm impressed with your spinning skills. Oh, girl. You know, I do a little, I dabble in, <laughs> in spinning yarn a little bit here and there. It's so fun though. Super zen. And of course you just get better with practice. I think the other day I came across a leftover chunk of like my first spinning stuff that I was like, I'm going to open the wheel and I'm going to start spinning. Boy, I did not know nothing about what I was doing. Talk about thick and thin. It was just like clunky chunk, clunk, clunk, chunk, clunk. And so now when I see this, I'm like, oh, this was the goal all along. I still can improve a lot, especially I find that when I blend different types of wool, different types of fiber, I kind of get into this mode and then I don't realize, oh no, like a chunk of short staple fiber is coming in and then it'll like get away from me. So I have to either do a better job of blending or just a better job of paying attention to what fiber it is that I am spinning but again I don't know what form or way I'm spinning I just you know <laughs> feed it some wool and let the machine spin it for you and so that's what I think a lot of people sometimes get held back because they feel like well I'm not sure of the technique I don't know if I'm doing it right these types of crafts especially fiber stuff just do what feels good in your hands. I feel like that's part of the whole thing. It doesn't matter. I mean, I can have five teachers come and tell me, hey, you're doing it wrong. I don't care because I still make yarn and I still knit with it and it looks good. So um, if that's you and you feel like you're like that, this is definitely a budget friendly little wheel to oh my God. obsessed. I wish it was a cuter color, but you know, I can put stickers on it. It's okay. And that's that. And then again, the size, the footprint is really small. Um, and then the foot pedal. Here's one thing I wanted to talk about. I always look at this. Does anybody else look at this? I do this mostly from sewing machines. I always look at the cords. Like how long is the cord for the, ele uh, for the electric hookup? How long is the cord for the foot pedal? Because sometimes I want to put things in different places where like these standard shorter cords really tend to annoy me because they don't reach to where I need them to or reach far enough away that I can toss that cord out of my way and it's not there. Here's what I noticed with this. You can see I had to put the little twist tie thingy back on because this cord is hella long. Love it. So if you wanted to place this on a countertop, like up here, okay, you can because this cord, and you know what? Why don't we go ahead and measure it? That's four feet. It is ooh, just shy of seven feet, 
oh, what did I do? I said four feet and then I did two more feet. So that's six. And then I went, oh, it's like seven feet long. This thing is long, long. Okay. So I love that. So, and for the pedal, again, you can twist it up like I had it. If you're just going to have it on the table right next to the little, um, spin, the little spinning wheel. <laughs> it's like, I want to call it the little spinner. Um, right next to it, you can just tap it with your hand. Cause your hands are kind of right here close. Just tap it to start, tap it to, uh, to stop. Or you can have plenty of length to get it down on the floor. So these are things that like people don't even think about and nobody really is going to tell you when you're buying it. And then you buy a sewing machine and then you're like, this thing has a four foot cord. How annoying, right? So that's stuff that I look at and I was really happy. The, the um, power cord as well, it's super long. Like it's going all the way behind me to an extension cord back here. So plenty long. I did like that. And the weight, I mean, this thing is super light. It comes apart, fully apart, of course, because I just assembled it before we went live here. And um, you can toss it in one tote bag, you know, like in one over-the-shoulder tote bag and take it with you on a trip. I do like how it's so light and so quiet, but it doesn't jiggle on the table, especially if you're doing, you know, like a regular speed like I was. Um, it seems to be super sturdy. And the size of the bobbins are pretty ridiculous, so I'm happy about that. All right. Let's see. Do, do, do. I think that's all I had, actually, because that's... Do, do, do. Let me see here. Yeah. Okay, so we talked about the spinning wheel. We talked about the new Chagu needle, um, uh, interchangeable needle sets. We talked about... Hold on. Let me put it on. The amazing Corinne Cardi is one of the four projects featured in the upcoming knit collage um, make-along. This is the only one of the four projects that features both. You can put them on me now. Um, that features both crochet and knitting. Let me take a sip. We can swap. Let's go ahead and put the front camera angle. So this is the one I'll be making. The link I've included for y'all in the video description of this YouTube video or in the Facebook chat, it's knitcollage.com slash crafty Gemini. That's like my um, affiliate link. If you click on there, you'll get more details. Um, sign up for their email newsletter. That will also get you details on when the cart is open so that you can order your kits, see all the projects, figure which one you want to order the kit for and start tuning in. But this is <laughs> definitely the one I'm gonna be making in a brighter color for sure, but look how cute. Okay, so we talked about this, the knit along, that, that, accountability partners out there. Let's tackle one work in progress that we have, no matter what craft. Let's pick something for the month of April. Stick to it, even if it's five minutes a week. Let's do something. Let's make some progress on our whips. And I will see y'all here next month, May. Remember, the first Friday of every month, I come to you live for Fiber Fridays with Crafty Gemini. And I'm hoping I've made progress on that weekender sweater for May. It's a long time away. I can do this. And so can you. So if you pick out a project, make some progress on it, and I will see you um, next month. Oh, here's another tip. Vicky's tuning in from Vicky's Wool, where I bought my EEW 6.0. She says it can also run on a battery that can be put in the base. So there you go. So even if you don't want to have all these cords, or maybe you're riding back seat or front seat, on a road trip, you can spin yarn there too. That would be awesome, huh? All right. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And now I'm going to go beat my husband at Scattergories, which I can never do. <laughs> These people don't let me play bilingual Scattergories. You know what I'm saying? They don't let me. But we're going to go play family game night tonight. Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Which I can never do. <laughs> These people don't let me play bilingual categories. You know what I'm saying? They don't let me. But we're going to go play family game night tonight. Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Which I can never do. <laughs> These people don't let me play bilingual categories. You know what I'm saying?